Greetings. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Dev Chatter. My name is Brendan, and uh, this, obviously, is Dev Chatter, uh, which you can probably tell from, well, the title of the page you're on, uh, and uh, logo up there in the corner. <clears throat> so, I want to welcome everyone here. Um, we are a channel that does uh, live streaming of software development, so we do programming stuff. You can see Visual Studio in the background behind me. That is the IDE that we use mostly on the channel, though we do occasionally use VS Code, uh, especially if we're doing JavaScript stuff, we'll be on VS Code. <laughs> SNB. Uh, oh, yes, it is Dinotastic. Uh, coming in with the 15 month uh, resub. And uh, <clears throat> glad to have you here. Uh, we're going to be doing some interesting stuff today. There's a couple of things I want to take a look at. Um, <clears throat> we actually had, um, <clears throat> excuse me, on Thursday night, I think it was, uh, I was watching a couple of streamers that were uh, actually using our Interactive 7 to do a little bit of a, a challenge race where they enabled all of the status effect stuff, uh, set the prices really low, and uh, basically had chat trying to destroy them. So it was a really cool thing with people constantly uh, poisoning and uh, putting to sleep and petrifying and, and all kinds of stuff. It was quite entertaining to watch. Um, so I really enjoyed seeing that because uh, people actually using some of the code that we built here on the stream is kind of neat. Um, <coughs> Uh, back to where I was, I mentioned uh, we usually use Visual Studio here. A lot of the code we do is in C Sharp, though we do some JavaScript and uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think we've done any TypeScript on the stream here. Uh, we've done some Python uh, and we've done various other languages in, in small quantities, uh, just in one off stuff. Uh, but uh, for the most part, C Sharp development is what you're going to find here. Uh, we do a lot of .NET Core. Uh, right now, our projects are in .NET Core 3, so if you have not upgraded to .NET Core 3, I highly recommend it. It is actually a very nice place for uh, C Sharp and .NET developers to be, is on uh, Core 3. It comes with a couple of benefits, one of those being that we can use .NET Core in our WPF uh, applications. So. Uh, the program we're working on today is a WPF application, and in addition to being a WPF application, it also spins up uh, essentially an ASP.NET app within itself, and when you start the, the like GUI application, there's also a web browser. So uh, if you see this little box next to me that's currently green, that is the... Uh, that is actually coming out of that program. It is currently running, uh, so we could... Uh, do this. Oh, it's going to mess up if I do that, isn't it? Uh, oh, it's not connected. Connect. Let's see if it works. Okay, good. Uh, there we go. So, it uh, goes and sets a random color when we do that. So, uh, yay! <laughs> we, we have color control, so that's fun. All right, uh, I realized I didn't start up a game of Final Fantasy VII because I need that running in the background to make some of this stuff work. So we're going to do that. Um, oh, that's funny. Yep, I have a break point over here. So uh, when the game starts up, uh, we actually go through and we load all of the data related to... Uh, the items and equipment inside of the game. So that's actually one of the first things that happens uh, when the game loads is this. Uh, so I'm actually just going to let that continue now. Okay. There we go. So now if I do menu random, now you can see that that little box down there is transitioning correctly. Now, what you might not be able to see, uh, for anyone that hasn't seen this before, um, we actually have control over the game menu, and that's actually just another preview that looks a lot like it's the game menu. Uh, so we can random it up, we can change it back to the default. Uh, we have full control either for colors or we can make palettes, things like that. So it's really cool if you haven't seen it before. Uh, but in addition to that, we also added status effects and other stuff. So there's a lot of cool things in there that make it work. Okay, where was I? I want to do this. Um, I have a couple of changes. Um, I 
Discard that, change. Uh, I'll let you see. Uh, okay, so I was doing a couple of changes to this program. Um, not changes that I like a lot, but they are somewhat important. Um, okay, uh, so uh, get um, pull status info on accessories. Okay. I am going to explain what we are going to look at. There's a couple of things we're going to look at today. Uh, uh, hey, F Society. Uh, welcome. So, uh, and uh, Andre, I uh, didn't say hi to you at the beginning. Welcome. Glad you're here. And uh, SNB, hello, hello. Uh, and anyone else who's in chat and not saying anything, hi. Hopefully you're having a fantastic Saturday. Okay, so I want to explain a little bit about what we're going to do today. There's a couple of things. Uh, number one, uh, we want to... Uh, take a look at status effects and make it so that uh, a if a status effect isn't supposed to be able to apply because the game says that it's not supposed to happen uh, because of equipment that the character has or something like that. So if they have something that protects them from poison, we shouldn't allow our program to just poison them. Uh, and sadly, the, the way that the game works is it doesn't just block the status effect from happening, it prevented it from happening in the first place. Which means, when we step in and we make it happen, uh, there are some bugs in the game. So we need to change our code to accommodate the game because the game's code is, is set, right? That's just how the game works. And so because of that, we're modifying it. We don't want to change the actual game code. We want to just have our program work within the rules set by the game. That's how we'll prevent uh, any, any bugs created by us. Okay, <clears throat> with that out of the way, the other thing that I want to do today is a really cool one that I haven't looked into yet, but I want to try. So I have not tried setting up GitHub Actions yet, uh, so, at, so I want to set these up today. I am like 90% certain that these are going to be the old... Um, uh, Azure DevOps builds uh, that will have been integrated into GitHub. So one of the things that I was looking forward to with uh, the Microsoft's acquisition of GitHub is that Microsoft has put more effort into uh, Azure and builds and things like that than uh, GitHub had at that point. GitHub's approach was we'll just, you know, off this to someone else and let them do it, which is cool. I love that and I want them to keep doing that. Uh, but I like the idea also of having some built-in stuff. So I like the idea of GitHub both allowing for third party as well as having some uh, actual like, you know, built-in ways of doing very simple builds. So a simple, I just want to build the code and run the tests. 100% that should just exist in GitHub. There is like zero reason for me to have to, you know, have a, a separate service just to do that. That's such a simple operation. Now, um, obviously, they're going to have more than just build and run tests, but that's the minimum I'd like to have. So we're going to take a look at that today. We're going to dig into it and see how that works. Um, anyway, um, yeah, let's have a look. <clears throat> okay, so this is running right now. I wanted to show you all the status stuff, so let's go ahead and do that real fast. I'm just going to go get into a, a, a fight in the game. Uh, do I have the statuses turned on? Uh, I do. Um, what's one that you could see? Um, you could probably see if I put a character to sleep. Or if I frog them, maybe? Yeah. We'll frog someone. Let's click some buttons and we'll get a combat started here. So just to make sure I don't die, I'm going to start off by giving my characters all regeneration. And that's going to let, let things just run without any problems. So <clears throat> right off the bat, I'm going to apply regeneration to all the characters. So you'll see they, they start glowing. And um, when they do that, uh, wait, uh, did the bottom one not get regen? He must have. Okay, so the characters all have regeneration, and uh, that is just going to mean that their health is going to continually be replenished. Uh, in addition to that, we could do things like, I could put Cloud to sleep. 
by using the sleep top command. I could put Barrett to sleep by using the sleep bottom command. And uh, you'll see that we then just have control of these characters and we can just do this kind of stuff. I can confuse the character in the middle. Well, once the animation stops, it should apply confusion to her. I think. I thought it was going to. She should get confused. And I do it right as a grenade animation goes again. Did they shoot her and, and interrupt it? Is no one getting... Oh, it's not confused. It's conf. Derp. My command is wrong on my, on my button. Oh, and actually confusion's turned off anyway. Conf, confusion, and let's allow confuse also. So we'll allow confuse. So now that should work. Oh, you guys didn't see what I was doing. Um, this is the program. I added confuse as an option for confusion. So now she should get confused, I think. Okay, now she's confused and she's attacking the rest of the party because she's confused. So you'll see that she attacked herself there. She attacked Barrett once. And I can actually make the other ones confused also. So they'll do the same thing. So see, they're actually shooting each other and themselves. And, and that's the confused status effect. So we're able to just apply these across the board to the characters. Uh, and it's kind of fun. So, all right. That's, uh, that's kind of the idea. Normally, um, well, let me just do this. Oh, the petrify status effect is disabled. <laughs> of course it is. Uh, Tim, thank you very much for that uh, follow. Greatly appreciated. Uh, so now when I petrify those characters, it should game over. There it is. Uh, so now that it has game overed, I can actually just get that to reload, and I don't have to do anything special, and the game will just be here. So let's go ahead and load things again. Doo -doo. There we go. Uh, we'll load it a different one, so now we're in this one. Okay. So, <clears throat> that's the program. Let's you change status effects, lets you control uh, various stuff. We can alter equipment and other things like that as well. Actually, that is a fantastic point. Um, I almost forgot about that. I need to game over really fast because we need to restart this. I need to game over because I want to load a different one. I need the one that I was just in, not this one. Okay. I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, so starting off, let's just go ahead and petrify those two characters, and then we get our game over. If all your characters are petrified, uh, you actually just game over, because petrify is a permanent status effect that someone needs to use an item to get you out of that status effect. So, hence... If everyone is is uh, petrified, you obviously have no one that is still standing to uh, get you out of it. All right. Here's why I wanted to check this one. If we take a look, you'll see that Cloud has some materia, Tifa has some materia, and Barrett has some materia. Now I want to change up their equipment. So let's say uh, we're going to give Cloud uh, his best weapon, which means he now has a whole bunch of materia slots. I need some materia. And it doesn't matter what the materia is. So I'm just going to give him this materia just as a test. So he has all that materia. And let me put another one in here. I'm gonna change his weapon. Okay. Now here's why we're gonna watch this. When I change his weapon to, uh, I don't know, let's go with that. Uh, oh, whoops, weapon cloud three. Okay, so he got equipped with the Butterfly Edge. 
There are no items there, and if we look down below, we should see there's the materia that was removed. So that is actually a change I just made. I will show you what I did for it. Because um, I do want to catch you all up because I did a couple of things outside of uh, outside of the stream. So I added in to our equipment commands. So that is uh, the ones that do weapons, armlets, and accessories. Um, SNB, I don't have a good answer for you on why that didn't work, but I will restart that bot and we'll see what happens with it. <laughs> All right, you should be back up again. Okay, um, so over here, uh, I added in a couple of things. First off, I added in this equipment data. Um, we added in a we sorry we added in the game database and uh, is that it? Yeah, that's it. We added in the game database. So here's why we did this. The game database is actually part of our status overlay, which you're not seeing our status overlay right now, but I'll show you what it looks like. Our status overlay looks like this. Localhost 777 status. So this is actually the status overlay. And uh, if we were to use our same menu commands that we use everywhere, you'll see that, uh, that it responds accordingly. The other thing that you'll notice about our status display here is that it actually has all the information about our characters on it. So if you look, you'll see that it does match up. It's got Cloud, it's got Tifa, it's got Barrett, it has their levels, it shows all their equipment. So that's so that a streamer can actually just have that information displaying while they're playing the game. So it's really nice to be able to have that because the viewers can just sort of watch and see what's going on. Well, as part of that, it had to pull all the information in order to know what to display. So in order for it to show the materia right here, it actually has to pull that information. So because of that, that means that uh, we know how many materia slots any given item is supposed to have. So what I did is I went and I said, um, right down here, so when we change out an item, what we do is we used to remove all the materia. I now pass in this value, which is the equipment ID. And what that does is I come down here and I say, all right, we have an equipment ID. Let's go into the database and ask it for that weapon. For example, this is our case. We take the weapon. We say, how many linked slots and how many single slots does it have? Okay, that's the number that we're going to keep. So we are going to keep that many materia slots. So when we go to remove, I remove all of the materia that is, whoops, wrong way. I remove all the materia past this. So I said keep four and then I remove the remaining four. So that's actually how we, how we did that. So I just told it, hey, don't keep those. And if you take a look, um, all we do in here is we just say, go to the memory location for where the character is, create an empty row, so this is the empty slot that we want to have, and then for essentially for each uh, materia slot for that character, we're actually going to step through, and we're going to take the materia out, and then we're actually going to write it into our, uh, whoops, that's the empty row, where's the, oh, add materia. Yeah, so essentially what we're doing is, we're taking the materia out of their in, out of their equipment and putting it in their inventory, and then we are overwriting the one on their item as an empty row. So we're basically just saying, "Hey, let's move it out and and store it." So that's the idea. Uh, <laughs> when S and B wins, it's rigged. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we have people playing our rock paper scissors game in chat uh, that are convinced that all of the games here are rigged, except when they win. Then they're not rigged. Herp -a derp derp herp -a derp. Okay, so that's how we did that. So that works well. We are removing the correct number of items, and I am thrilled by that because uh, that actually seems to work well. And there's one thing with like testing it and making sure that the code does what you what you expect it to do, and then there's an entirely different thing of actually seeing that happen in the game uh, because you got to remember we're altering another running process. And that's actually how we're doing this. We are writing to the memory of this other process. So it's not, not one of those like, yeah, it's just going to work. It's like, yeah, it should work. 
probably, I hope. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, that's how I prove it's not rigged. Um, it's by doing that. Um, status effects command. Okay, so you all saw me using commands where I was poisoning, sleeping, confusing, uh, giving regen status, and all these other things to the characters in the game. When I did that, <clears throat> that was actually using the status effect command that we have here. And that applies those status effects. Something that I want to do is, uh, before we make someone pay... Uh, now I can I can edit here despite the fact that this is running, but um, it'll get weird if I actually try to do anything with it. So, uh, but I am still going to try and make some changes here. So we're going to say if true. Um, and what do we want to do here? Um, we need to check and see whether or not the player has an item equipped that blocks a status effect. Let's see, SMVs, you want to you want to be able to switch. Uh, you want to do pattern matching on a generic type T, but you can't seem to do it. Um, so, if you have a type T, you can like if you mean the the cases are going to be types, and you have a type T, you can still get away with that, especially if you've got a restriction on the T. So, if the T say had to be like equipment, for example. Um, and you don't care whether that equipment is uh, a weapon, armlet, or an accessory, you could switch on weapon, armlet, and accessory, and that would work just fine. Um, if that's the scenario you're in. If you're wanting to get more, uh, where T is a struct, uh, the types can still be any one of the structs. It can still be anything that is a struct, I think. Um, but it's then just going to, I mean, that, that'd be similar to like, just taking an object and switching on on a type, which you can still do. Uh, but if you want to be able to switch on a T, um, that could get weird. I'm not sure how that'd work. I, I'd have to see the scenario you're talking about to know more than that. But you should be able to you should be able to switch on types still, uh, at least if you're just doing that simple case. Okay, so we have the game database and the equipment accessor uh, that we've made available to ourselves so we need to do a couple of things first off equipment accessor because we need to find out what accessory this character has so we want to get um for the character Ooh, we need to know who the character is i'm not sure how we figure out who the character is um we don't have that data so the reason why in our status effects, why we say top, middle, and bottom, instead of specifying the characters by name, is because we don't have the characters by name at this point. Um, Seng does, though. So Seng is the status overlay. That's the name of it. Because uh, it was a separate program that someone else was building, and we decided to just merge them together. So... Uh, Anytime you see me in the Seng code, um, there, that's a reason why the styling is different. For example, like he has stuff in regions, and you usually don't see me using regions. Okay, uh, but it, it has come together pretty well, uh, all things considered. So, FF7 battle map. You know what? I kind of want to do this. Let's go to our registrar. And let's make a new class also. So, where is the game database? Game database right here. Oh, FF7 Battle Map. Was that it? Did I? I don't want that here, do I? No, because that makes a single one. And this is getting recreated. Okay, so, alright, here's the way that it looks like Seng works. Uh, let the region wars begin. Yes, Fuel Snable, we can let the region wars begin. Uh, 
So the way that it works is on a timer, it reloads all the game data as the way Seng works. So it's just constantly reading all the memory in the game and mapping it onto these structures. Uh, so that's actually all it's doing. Um, we want this data. Which I kind of want to just make a thing that'll just read this. So why don't we, where our materia accessor is, we'll go here. I'm gonna go here. And I'm gonna make a public interface. And I'm gonna call this a um, I battle, uh, battle info accessor. So we're gonna make a new interface and um, why don't we have it return back battle info? So he called it battle map, um, which has battle actor. I wonder if these can all move into core. Can these just go into core? Let's move files around. At which point this would be FF7, um, FF7 battle map and get battle map. would be what we would call the most negative code reviews you've ever been a part of were discussing regions yeah people get really heated about them I kinda sit there and go like yeah you can use them to hide stuff and I absolutely get the case of you don't need them because a lot of people will point out that if you need regions there's probably something wrong with the code and I kinda sit there in the middle as I do on a lot of these things and I kinda go like yeah, I don't use them a lot, but there are some cases where even though they aren't needed, they're not necessarily bad, because every once in a while you're like, no, this code really did have to get, you know, there's a bunch of stuff, and it it's a way of stating the organization you're doing, so if you want to have it be like, I've got all my, you know, properties and things, and if, like, regions are a way to make sure that people know to put things in the right spot, the problem is, like comments, they can get out of date, so for example, if if something was in a private properties region and you change it from private to public, if you didn't move it, it's in the wrong place and it's kind of like having an outdated comment that's wrong. So I can see both arguments of it, uh, but then again, developers tend to get, you know, up in arms about all kinds of stuff. We argue about stuff. Um, uh, QF, hey, welcome, greetings. Welcome to the stream. Uh... <laughs> I don't know about best among them, uh, but I will say I try not to get in those kinds of arguments because I don't think it's worth it. Uh, I really think that everybody's best off just, you know, do do what you like. Let other people do what they want to do. Uh, I, I don't think there are really that many wrong choices. Um, so I think generally speaking, people should just, you know, make the choices that are good for them. You type them with a caps lock. Nice. There you go. Yeah. Let me guess. You also use tabs and spaces together. Uh, you work with a developer who uh, has eye problems, depends on regions for code navigation. Yeah, exactly. See, um, you they can they can help you with navigating code and other things like. There are also, um, you know, some some people like you know like using big fonts. At which point they don't like really long lines. Uh, so if you actually use a larger font, you will you know uh, new line more frequently to avoid having really long lines. Uh, when I'm streaming, I, I try to kick up the percentage a little bit so you can all see what I'm doing. Um, it's, you know, it's just the kind of stuff you, you gotta do. You gotta make decisions based on your scenario. Be considerate of your team and uh, make good, just try to make good choices. That's, that's really the, uh, the end answer there. Try and make good choices. 
Uh, and good choices are, are, you know, specific to each team, so... So, whoops, battle info, uh, battle info accessor. I can type, everyone. I promise I know how. I learned. I learned how to type. 28 point font for the win, yeah. Uh, how old am I? Uh, I am old enough to have been programming for over 20 years. Um, which gives you very little information about how old I am. You just know that I'm, you know, well over 20. <laughs> Uh, and then it depends on when I started programming. But it was 20 years ago. Uh, oh, well, yeah, more than 20 years ago. Um, uh, can't you just uh, set your editor to auto-inflate regions if you don't like them? Uh, yeah, no, uh, every afternoon, no, you're totally right. Um, you, can, you can have the regions always just be expanded uh, in your editor if you want. Uh, but then, um, like, some people just don't like them because... Uh, they don't want to have to put things in those spots and other things like that, and they don't think they add value. But m my stance is if, if your team wants to use regions, use regions. If your team doesn't want to use regions, don't use regions. Um, my, my general case is uh, just don't, like, don't don't be that guy. Don't, like, which I, that's that's the, the, you know, applies to me perspective. I try not to be that guy. I don't want to be the person that, uh, you know, steps in and, and gets in the way of, of the team doing things the way they want. So while I generally choose spaces, as you can tell from the the white space dots here on the side, uh, I have worked with plenty of people that use tabs, and I just switch my editor to tabs when I work on those projects, and works just fine. Um, and you know, if your team uses tabs, cool, use tabs. If your team wants to use spaces, use spaces. So uh, is it not running? What is Hey Nate, welcome. Uh, let's see. Um, over B is the new uh, B, right? S and B over B. Someone's over B. Uh, yeah, just don't <laughs> just don't go over. Uh, what's on the agenda today? Uh, so we are taking a look at the status effect bug. We're we're gonna um, kind of solve the ribbon bug a little bit uh, today, and then we are also going to. Um, Probably take a look at getting an automated build on our um, on our GitHub site. Uh, so, for anyone that doesn't know, for the um, people that are uh, that do use GitHub another way, uh, that use yeah, excuse me. <laughs> uh, Suna, <laughs> there you go. Work that time. Uh, thank you, Nate, for the 16-month uh, uh, subscription, and thank you, Sunamods, for the 4-month subscription. Uh, so what I was saying about uh, GitHub Actions. Uh, so GitHub has added the ability to have actions, uh, and that really is just um, putting a continuous integration system uh, onto GitHub. I should say a continuous build system. Sorry. Wrong, wrong words. Uh, continuous build system. So the idea is when you commit, it can automatically do builds, run tests, and things like that. So we're probably going to do that. Uh, and take a look at what that does. Um, is is that not working? That might not be working. Um, so that changed. Oh yeah, no, it changed. Okay. So menu menu is there. Every developer should have their own tab. Like you mean so that everyone has different tab lengths. So some people's tabs are one space. One some people's tabs are like three. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, fuel snable. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so if you if you started to see uh, if if you use the opposite one of the other developer, you could tell when they were in there. Your tab spacing is set to a grid. That's nice, S and B. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the battle info accessor we're gonna create here. Um, we actually need to make one, so it needs to do something. So this is how we're going to get battle uh, information. So while while the characters in the game are in a combat, we want to be able to uh, know uh, who is in that combat and other bits of information about them. So that is what this class is going to do for us. And I accidentally hit insert which you all noticed because it got the little insert cursor there. 
Okay, um, this needs a memory accessor, so we're gonna do this. So, Battle Info Accessor gets a memory accessor. We're gonna make sure the constructor matches the name of the type. And we're gonna delete that line. Give it that. Uh, we are going to implement the interface right there. And then I'm gonna jump back over to Seng and Seng, please do me a favor here and do this followed by uh, this, but actually just return it. Uh, so that's our memory reader. Ooh, he doesn't do it the same way. He uses a memory reader, I use a memory accessor. They're not quite the same. I'm gonna need to look up the differences. Um, how's the memory accessing stuff working? Uh, we are actually using the, um, uh, blah, blah. Um, it's, we're, we're using the uh, Win32 one, uh, the Kernel32 DLL uh, methods to actually access the memory of the running processes. Words. Uh, they are sometimes challenging on uh, stream. Okay, um, that's not how we read memory. We do read mem. Pass in the process name, which we access like this. process name um, and then what do we do with this address in the bytes um, which I need the memory location for that which is that actually should work is this just not in the right place What is this? This is a memlock. Oh, this is a memlock. Nice, I switched it to a memlock. Yes, go me. Ha 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 Address. I hadn't realized I did this. Um, we'll call that bytes. So var bytes equals a uh, new byte array of that length. There we go. Okay, what's going on in chat? Uh, how do you turn off... Uh, uh, read mem versus read memory. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, okay, so... <laughs> yeah, there's a... Uh, uh, th there's, there's a nice question going on in chat. Why do you have two of these things? All right, let me explain. Uh, background for people that weren't here either in previous streams or weren't here in the beginning of this stream. So we are building a program called Interactive 7. Uh, it is this WPF app that you see over there in the corner. Uh, by having that application running, we actually have control over this game, which is Final Fantasy VII. Uh, we are able to both read and write memory, so we can do things like change the color of the menu live while the person is playing the game. So this is actually just in the game. We can make these changes like at any point while we're just playing these games. So you'll see I can just alter these menu colors using these commands. Uh, we do a lot more than just menu color, but menu color is the most visually obvious one that it is happening. So I like to use that as the demonstration of, yeah, it's working. Uh, in addition, we're also doing things with status update displays. Uh, so you'll notice that this is changing as well. And you didn't see it because it was back here, but that window was also changing. So this window is designed for streamers to be able to display the information of the game while they're playing. That screen is actually pulling all of its information out of the game directly, uh, including uh, pulling the information about the weapons, uh, the, the character's images, uh, it's pulling all the, the character's names, their data, and it's displaying it so a streamer can have that up and anyone watching can see the current state of the game, even if the player is not on the menu. So let me put that to the side so you can see what I mean. Uh, if I'm not in a menu, and I'm just running around, you'll notice there's no status display, people can't tell what's going on, but 
by having this program running, you do. Okay, so how does this, uh, so the question then is why do I have multiples of all these things? Well, uh, a guy named uh, Mr. Shoji uh, was uh, creating that status display and I was creating the program that was allowing you to alter the game. Uh, as it turns out, we were both doing pretty much the same thing, reading uh, memory out of the game. I was also writing it, uh, and we kind of said, why don't we just merge these two projects? So that's what we're doing, is merging the projects. First, we just kind of shoved them together and said, hey, these work, but now we're in the process of getting them actually wired together so that they work more closely. So the one that said read memory, that one is his. The one that said read mem, that one is mine. Uh, eventually we're going to only have one, and interestingly enough, we are actually going to take, um, like, my version mostly, but a couple of things out of his. Because uh, there are a couple of things that he did where he went a little bit further with his uh, than what I did with mine. And the funny thing is, uh, his using those memloc objects and everything like that, that's actually because I already altered his to do that, because I was like, oh, mine handled memory better, yours read memory better, so let's combine these together and sort of use both. So that's actually what we're in the process of doing. Uh, but um, right here, we are going to be using my, my structure for it, his implementation, uh, and then that's how it's going to work. So it... It, it makes sense, but right now there's two, so it's a little confusing. Uh, one of them is going away, uh, it just hasn't gone away yet. Okay, um... So that is going to be the bytes, and then he wants to know whether or not it is battle. <clears throat> um... How was he finding that out? Was he just checking that one? He was just checking that. Just grabbing a single bite. Oh, uh, the first of the bite sequence. Oh, that actually makes total sense. I guess we can do that. So we'll just do this. Um, is battle bite. Uh, so this is going to be a new bite array of one. Uh, no, not a system bite, just a regular bite, thank you. And if anybody's wondering, that does not actually make a difference. Uh, not a real difference in uh, C Sharp. Uh, so then, uh, is battle is just going to be is battle bite dot first. So that is going to be that. There should only be one, right? We only need to get one. Yeah, it's only one. I don't know why I needed to first that. So that'll just be the is battle bite. Oh, uh, oh, oh, because it needs to be the uh, the single, so it'll be single. Yeah. Okay. Uh, whoops, nope, don't stop debugging. Um, that'll return back the battle map. And then inside of our... Oh, I need to go to the registrar, and I need to register this, because uh, this needs to this needs to exist. Um, I only want one of these. I need to make sure that we don't get more than one, because... Well, I guess it doesn't matter, because there's no state on this, but I don't want to be creating it uh, constantly, so... Battle info accessor. So, it's going to grab one of those, create it, and then have one of these and then inside of our status effect command I see uh, people chatting I will be there in just a second to check that out uh, okay what is going on um, uh, mr. Shoji hey we were talking about you welcome long time no see um, uh, yeah so uh, 
uh, commentator. That was uh, our IOC registration. So we were registering all the types that our IOC container can give us. Uh, glad to see you're here, Mr. Shoji. I am doing some fun stuff right now. Um, not doing it exactly the way that I want to with everything, but it's not bad. Um, and please ignore all of the squiggly lines. That is a uh, complaint that uh, Visual Studio has because I've got the program running and I'm altering the code. So it's not happy about that. Uh, I guess I can stop the program here. Let me set menu to default. We'll have default colors. Uh, so there you go, everybody. Stopping the program. It's not going to be running anymore. Uh, no, no, uh, nothing terrible, Mr. Shoji. We're just messing with stuff. Um, so, uh, we have access to a copy of the battle map here. Uh, interestingly, we already know that it is active. Uh, so let's grab the party. Um, they've got to be in order, right? This has to be an order of... of Top, middle, bottom has to be, uh, right, top, middle, bottom, at which point we can have, oh, oh, I forgot we did that, yeah, because we've got them in there. That's interesting. I forgot we did that. We might have been able to pull it this way. Um, either way. Um, commentator, thank you for the uh, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. Um, so uh, zero, one, and two are going to be the indexes of them. Top, middle, and bottom. That's got to be what they are. Uh, so we're going to say int index, and yes, for anyone that doesn't know, in C Sharp, uh, we use indexes a lot despite the fact that uh, obviously you're getting nowhere near an index because you could use two bits to handle the amount of uh, options we have here, but in C Sharp, for m most purposes, you're just going to be using ints anyway, which yes, uh, it is a slight overuse of memory, but that's just kind of the way the language works. It's not designed to optimize that kind of thing. Uh, in most situations. Uh, so we're gonna make a get only property that is that. Um, so we're gonna say actor.index to get the party member that we want. Uh, so that is the battle actor, which should have some additional information. Um, does edit and continue work for C Sharp these days? Uh, Fuel Snable. Uh, it can in certain circumstances. It depends on what you did, um, and you can make it do it. Uh, but I'm less trusting of it, especially uh, with our n use of IOC containers, uh, because of the fact that we will need to run a reload to be able to have access to some of that stuff. So essentially, we will need some of the initialization to get the program running. Uh, so uh, C Sharp is optimized to be awesome. That is that is valid. Uh, dropping over to an actual keyboard. Oh, oh, okay. So soon, uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Shoji, you must have been on, uh, like a phone or something, or a phone or a tablet or something. Uh, generic methods and lambdas most notably. Yeah, exactly, every afternoon. There's a handful of things that it's going to have an issue with. The In our case, the IOC container is going to be worse than anything else for, uh, trying to make changes. The index on the party can be null. Uh, Mr. Shoji, what do you mean the index on the party can be null? Index on the party, what do you mean? You mean if there's no one in the party? Oh, it was phone, phone casting to TV. Nice, yeah. Oh, big screen. Nice. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The party member could be null. Yes, exactly. The battle actor result that we get could be could be null. This is what you're saying? This is... Really? Uh, I guess it wouldn't wouldn't be here, it would be... This would have to be nullable? This... There wouldn't be an item in that location in the array?
where his battle map offsets. <clears throat> over here okay um you know what i'm betting these constants can all just move i'm actually just gonna toss these over here this is a set of constants there we go <clears throat> uh yeah exactly uh index uh, index two when there's either one or two party members would be would be null um Um, okay, so we'll say um, if battle actor is null, uh, return. It can't be null because that is a struct. Um, what is it? Would it be this? Uh, yeah, I'm wondering whether or not we're we're tweaking the indexes. Like if if there's no one in the top and the bottom, what's the data? Um, which in order to find that out, I'm gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna comment these out, and I'm gonna have a look at the data while we're in a battle by going in here. Um, actually, I'm going to wait until I'm in battle and then click that. The last person in that slot. Um, uh, yes, commentator, I have actually had to use uh, Visual Basic uh, a reasonable amount. All Visual Basic is going to be uh, index based starting at 1 instead of 0. Uh, there are different reasons and advantages to each one um, if, as far as like the, the actual program itself is concerned. Um, well, there you go, commentator. Yeah, if you, <laughs> you managed to avoid that. Uh, hey, Wheatlaw, welcome. Uh, Lua. Uh, I have actually had to do a little bit of Lua for something. Um, yeah, no problem, Mr. Shoji. I mean, like, <laughs> no no complaints here at works. I actually wanted to talk to you recently. Um, there is a thing I want to do with this uh, that I think you might be able to help me do. Um, that is a little more complicated. Uh, it's an idea that, um, that uh, Suna and I came up with. Yeah, battle map is probably a little weird. I, I know. That's why I'm leveraging your battle map instead of trying to write my own. Because uh, there's going to be some stuff with that, and I'm hoping you've gotten more of that there. Um, anyway, the... I don't need that. I don't need to connect to do this. Uh, so the thing that I want to take a look at at some point is I want to try and find, while the game is running, the... Uh, data for the fonts um, and the reason why is I want to be able to take some of the um, unused characters like mostly unused characters in the font file and change them during the game I want to be able to actually change the image files so first off we're gonna get confirmation of the characters that are in this combat uh, so we are in combat, so if I go to here, I should be able to catch a breakpoint. Uh, and I'm going to remove it so we don't catch again, um, which we might have caught multiple times already. So I'm going to go into the battle map. No, it wouldn't catch multiple times because uh, there's a, uh, because it would be single file. John Sugar, welcome. Thanks for that file, much appreciated. Um...
You're trying to find items and uh, items and descriptions. Oh, um, so that's actually a good point. Um, so you were pulling the character images, which is going to be similar to the fonts. We just need to find where they are. Um, and the reason why I want to, yeah, it's timer triggered, so there would be only, uh, it, um, yeah, it could, but I think the fact that I'm in one means it's not going to do the second cycle of it, because I think they are sequential, uh, on that timer. Uh, so I think when one completes, it then go, it then rewires it up to do it the second time, but I don't remember specifically how it was set up. Uh, anyway, um, I want to be able to find some of the image data that's inside of the program and check to see it. Uh, it wasn't set up that way? I thought it was, uh, Mr. Shoji. I, I might not remember. I haven't looked at it recently. Anyway, uh, so we're checking to see active battle. It's going to be one, uh, so we'll set that. And then we're setting the bytes onto there. And then, is this just pulling it? Get actors. So, it creates four. <coughs> exactly, Mr. Shoji. So my thought is, if we can actually pull the data from those, I'm hoping that we can use that to find them inside the file. So if we can find where that image data is in the file once it's loaded, so if we could say, like, find it from the the kernel and then look in the memory to see if we can find those same bits, I'm hoping we can track down where the images are and then change them live because uh, I've got some crazy stuff that I want to do if we can pull that off. <clears throat> oh, it's weird stuff for summons. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, uh, let's see, so, so this has this set, so the first one, it's going to check and see if there is someone here, and create them, and this should be, Where do we get their names then, uh, if we're not applying it here? Because it's not saying who they are. So we must be just looking at the party then for that, and just seeing how the party order matches up with this. So that's funny. Uh, we have to pull both both bits of data. Uh, so this is the second one, and then the third one we're saying is this one. Third one has 477. Okay, so they are in order, so it is zero, uh, so zero, one, and two. So we've confirmed that the order is what we expect it is. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and is this one, what's, what's actually here for this? Nothing, yeah. That's weird. Okay, uh, so that pulls us the party data, and then, so we've pulled that, and then uh, inside of the status effect command, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that the order was uh, the way it was, uh, that like the game didn't have them in a different order and then display them in that order, just so I wasn't like crazy here. Uh, what actually happens then, uh, let's continue. We'll just let it go. Now, I am going to just die in this fight so that uh, I can uh, reset real fast. Oh, I didn't connect. Dang it. Connect. So I can do this fight again. Oh, I thought I saved that status being turned on. Settings. Status effects. Petrify. Save settings. Yes, please. Okay, there's our game over. Uh, menu dark purple didn't work? Oh, Genesco, I bet you just don't have enough money to do it, maybe? No, I've got it free, it's free. 
What am I talking about? It's free. Okay, let's... Uh, can I... I cannot remove a party member uh, at this point in the game. Do I have a save where I can remove a party member? Let's go start a combat again, and I'll petrify everybody, and I'm going to see. I might not have a save where I can change party members, but I guess I could load the other save, because it's missing a party member. So I'll just load a save that's missing someone, and we'll see what it does with that. So I think we get a party actor, and they're just empty, is my guess. Uh, so there's our game over. Because everybody gets petrified. Yeah, but new game takes too long to load. Here, and this is in the reactor. It's only got two party members. Let's confirm what those three party members look like. Because I'm pretty sure we're going to end up with someone that's just zeroed out. But I would like to see that. Wouldn't, wouldn't you like to see that? I would like to see that. Alright. <laughs> Blondie. I forgot that was his name here. Okay. Uh, so, that is running. Let's go to the battle map and get actors. Let's drop a breakpoint there. Uh, so we end up with actors, and some of them are empty. So how do we detect the empty ones? Uh, the... Max HP would be zero, probably, is the best way to detect a, a uh, an empty slot. Alternately, we could look at the we could look at the actual party information uh, as an, instead of battle information. Um, but for now, I guess I'll just look at this, and we'll say that if it is. Yeah, that is a good point. Um, let's let's go ahead and do that. So I'll let this run again. And um, how do you run away? Is it is it page up, page down? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Got to remember what it is. Yeah, wheat lol. But that's only if they put them in the right spots. Otherwise, we got to actually check it each time, which would be a pain in the rear. Okay. So now we've left the space in the middle. Let's find out what it does with that. So we have a character on the top and a character on the bottom, no middle character. So let's drop the breakpoint here. And there it is. Uh, so first one, second one. Okay, it is as expected. They are in the actual order. So that means if it is a zero max HP, there wasn't a character there to begin with. Okay, uh, so... Uh, I can stop debugging that, and let's go take a look. So that means if the battle actor uh, max HP is zero, then we're just going to say he's not there, return. Um, you know... Because max HP I don't think should ever be zero. Uh, yeah, exactly, Wheatlaw. It seems like they do just tell, like, we can just see that, because there's no character there. Um, and, and, yeah, um, in the long run, we're probably going to want to change that out and make that a little bit better than this, but I do want to get this working, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, uh, so that's the battle info, uh, that we can pull that way. Uh, we might, so I still don't have the character, though, do I? You know what? I might want the party instead of the battle info, even though we're in a battle. Um, let's do this. And, um, uh, or... Uh, battle, uh, battle actor dot... Wait, do I already check that they have the status already? 
I think I do. Yeah, I think I do, actually, in there. Um, we need to see what equipment they have. The only way to do that is... So the characters. Party member one, yeah, live character IDs. I bet that's it. Live party holds character records. Yeah, that one will work. Let's do the same thing with this. So we did a battle map access. We did battle info accessor. Let's make, um, let's just make a general game info accessor for like, when you just need full game info, uh, which we can split out later to have things like party and stuff like that. So um, if you're not pulling all of it, although maybe we're going to like we might just make these be what the Seng program runs uh, in, instead of just doing it uh, like manually for each one. We'll do these and then store the information somewhere that's accessible through the whole program so that both uh, Seng and uh, the interactive parts can use the same data instead of both accessing them separately. Um, um, we'll just say game info accessor for now. Um, get, uh, get game info, uh, which is fine. Uh, and then this will be a save map. I think it's what it's called, FF7 save map. Oh, did I not move this? I bet I didn't move this. Okay. Make sure it builds. Uh, that one's not building because I left a thing, which is fine. Comment that out. Build. Now does the other one build, or does it? Did it want something out of there that it can't reach now? Showed you Elena extensions. Uh, Set in the run once. So this has access to Shojulana. Does this not have it? No, we didn't put it in there. Okay, you know what? I think if I put this in here, things are gonna get messy. Because I think these have uh, some cross concepts. Which is why I didn't pull Elena in at first, because uh, we have some matching type names with Elena, I think is the problem. But maybe it's not an issue right now. Let me just run it and see if it crashes or if the program runs. I seem to remember something like that, but maybe it's not an issue right now. Oh, well, hit that breakpoint, so that's pretty good. Yeah, it, it loaded. Okay. So we'll have a look. All right, so uh, if that's the case, then that means that these were both able to move. So <clears throat> game info accessor can become its own thing. Uh, public class game info accessor, and it'll be an I game info accessor. 
and it will also have a constructor just like this one. Almost the same name. And then in here, <clears throat> we're going to do something fairly similar also. Except that instead of passing back one of those, we're going to pass back one of these. And what does its constructor take? Because uh, I'm betting it's just the bytes. Yep, it's just the bytes. Okay. Uh, welcome, someone. Uh, Chi... Is it uh, wait wait uh, is it was that was that like cheese chef chef dev or was that uh, was that like cheese cookie dev I'm not sure which either way uh, welcome uh, thank you for that follow much appreciated um, Elena has 189 downloads wow Mr Shoji that's actually kind of impressive um, it's German cheesecake ah yeah that makes sense yeah see there you go <laughs> I was like. Uh, yeah, see, apparently I didn't know the word for, uh, for well, cheesecake, but yeah. I, I knew the first word was, was cheese. I could never forget cheese. Uh, I, I don't think I ever knew the word cake in German, to be honest, although... It, uh, actually, that's a good point. Um, isn't, isn't cookie in German more like cake? Isn't it like cakes or something like that? It's, it's something. I don't remember. I mean, and my accent's terrible, but... Was, uh, I think it's something like that. Uh, yeah, Mr. Shoji, there, but there are a lot of uh, modders uh, that would probably be interested in it as well. And uh, don't worry, Mr. Shoji, I am a handful of those downloads as well. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, if you think about it, because wouldn't you pronounce that like cakes or something like that? At which point that's more like cake than cake is in, uh, when you translate. Uh, just kind of funny. But either way, welcome. We have a, we, we actually get a reasonable amount of uh, German uh, speakers here in the, in the dev chatter stream. So, welcome. Okay. Um... Don't need these. Do you need this? Uh, no, no, no. We certainly don't account for all of them. But, um, I mean, just in my adding them and removing them from projects uh, and, and with cleaning and, and, and uh, like, setting things up with different versions of .NET Core, I am sure that I account for at least two digits worth so I'm probably like, you know, 10 to 20 of those. Um, accessor of the fantasy. Yes, it really is. Uh, but yes, it means that there are at least a handful of people out there that are probably really using it for things, uh, which is very cool. Um, let's see. Registrar. So we're going to go into the dependency registrar, and we're going to add our types to this. So right next to our battle info accessor, we're going to add our I game info accessor. Uh, game info accessor. Add that as well. And now inside of our um, status command, status effect command, there it is. We want to have that I game info accessor, which, yes, I know this got a little bit out of control. We're going to need to do some refactoring for how this works. Um, but I do want to get this working because there are some people currently trying to use our program for some streaming stuff they're doing. So I would like to make it work uh, so that that stuff can actually happen uh, as, you know, intended. Uh, so instead of checking the battle actor, I'm actually just going to check the character. So we are going to grab the game info. Game info dot uh, live party. I think that's the one. Actor dot index to get the one that we intend. 
And this should get us a character record. That's the character ID. Um, now, in order to see what this is, I actually want to check at this point here. And we'll have a look at the save map and see what's in there. So, um, yeah, exactly, Mr. Shoji. I, I do know what you mean. And they have that same concept for uh, all the menu color stuff as well. I don't know if you if you knew that. Um, but um, the actual value that gets saved uh, for the colors of the menu is not the, uh, the same values that they use to display. Those are actually in two separate locations. Uh, which only someone like me would actually know that. <laughs> it's a little weird. Okay, so live party. Uh, whoa, it's listing three? Uh, is that because it's always just three and one of them might be empty? Zero, 255, and one. Okay, so live character ID. So 255 is a non-existent person. So this is ID 255. So if their ID is 255, they're not actually there. And otherwise they are, and that can tell us who they are. Wait, why did Barrett have ID zero? ID zero, ID zero. Is it a character ID? Is it a separate ID? Uh, uh, yeah, I was explaining that uh, to... Uh, Suna and uh, Strife actually recently that uh, I actually think there are five places where there are colors, but yes, uh, there are a lot of them because there's also the spot where uh, there's there's a so there's at least four. There's the ones that are used for saving. There's the ones that are used for displaying the the menus in the game. There is the one that is uh, that is used for. Um, well, I can't show it right now, but when you're changing the colors in game, there's both the color swatch value that you're using while you're editing it, and also the values that are used in the sliders. So there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, yeah, Wheat Law, Mr. Shoji is the Shoji that uh, that is the one that uh, uh, did the status display stuff uh, that uh, we're merging into Interactive 7. Uh, Toby, hello, greetings, welcome. Welcome to the stream today. Okay, so that tells me a couple of things. So let's go back to the status effect. Um, we want to check uh, live character IDs uh, instead <clears throat> first. So we're going to say if live character ID equals uh, what? Um, it's 255, right? So if that's 255, then return no character here. So that's how we're going to detect that there is no character at the designated position. Um, Yes, exactly, Mr. Shoji. I also had to do that a long time ago, figuring out which ones were which. Uh, the nice thing you get is you didn't have to go find out uh, which one would save it. Because that's why I had to figure out what the fourth one was to get that. And uh, yes, uh, Mr. Shoji, um, well, uh, that is a good point. We could just go make sure that we're setting it in that one. Uh, I was just not going to deal with it yet, but... Um... Uh, character record, so new character record, uh, you, oh, we're just setting the IDs like this, just, just like that, yeah, here's why, they're getting set here, and then, uh, 
Oh, they're creating this one. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so when we map in this, so when we fill character, so that's how we get the 255s, and then when we set these characters here, what are we doing? Character get by ID. You're just not setting the ID? We're just not setting the ID, I bet. It's gotta be the character ID, right? It's gotta be that one? Is it not just that value? That is an int being assigned to an ID. I guess the fact that it's an int doesn't matter. It could be a byte, right? Unless something here required it be an int. It didn't. So what called this? Anything else bomb because I did that or were those able to take a byte? Because character ID is always going to be a byte. Okay, cool. Everything else uh, was able to use, everything else already had it as a byte and we were just changing it to an int for no reason. So we'll change that character ID there to that, and then uh, inside of Seng Program, I'm going to drop my breakpoint back here. We're going to run it again. Remember, we're still in the middle of a combat in the game. Uh, if you see, it's right here. Combat is still going, so we can drop to this point. Take a look in here. Live character IDs have 0, 255, and 1. And now when we open up the live party, we should see an ID of 0 for the first guy, an ID of 1 for the second guy, and that one's an ID255. So it looks like it is getting set now. Uh, so there we go. The value is the value is in there. <clears throat> um, don't need that breakpoint anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So the combat is going. So inside of um, our status effect command, we're going to say uh, live party index and then this is going to get stored in the character record um yeah character record because we just need to know who it is really uh, actually did crap did we need more than the ID I don't think we needed more than the ID now that I think about it we might have only needed the ID what else is on the character record, actually? No, character record might just have the data that we want, actually. Yeah, it does. It has the accessory right here. Um, is this just the accessory ID, though? Yeah, it's just the accessory ID. Okay. Uh, so, character record dot id equals 255 then that's the that's the no character here return so we don't actually need to do that one right now because that I don't think has the right info for us um, but we do want to say um, game database accessory database um, singular default for their accessory um, whoops. Uh, ID equals that value so we want to find one that has that value so that's their accessory um, if accessory does not equal null, so we if we found one and the accessory whoops accessory dot protects from do we have the status effect already? Status setting not effect. So if it protects from that, uh, then uh, return um, not allowed to. Uh, and let, let's send a message for this. 
Twitch client to the uh, what is it? Command data dot channel can't apply. Uh, can't apply, uh, what is it? It's status name to uh, character record name. Oh, that's funny. I didn't even think about that. That's going to get weird. Um, I don't want to do it by name. I want to say what their choice was. So, actor dot. How did I get actor? Where did I pull it from? That'll be our message. There we go, so it's a little less messy. Okay, uh, what is this? Uh, that's the one I started with, uh, so. Oh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, uh, probably, Mr. Shoji, because uh, we, we use it elsewhere as well, because there's uh, I, I sometimes use an empty uh, constant for it, things like that. I think that's the one that, that stops us from having this problem. I think that's the one that does it. That might be enough. Let's try. Yeah, they're gonna be they're gonna be all over, uh, Mr. Shoji. There's there's a lot of cleanup that we need to do at some point. <laughs> it's one of those like, yeah, it has to happen, but um, <clears throat> hopefully that uh, that'll uh, game over us there, and I can restart with uh, a, a party that's gonna this party is gonna do this correctly. Uh, no, so if, so here's the funny thing, is if a character has protection from a status, and we apply that status to the character, what ends up happening is the game doesn't let us remove it. So, if Cloud gets poisoned, Antidote doesn't work on him if he has a ribbon equipped. Because for some reason the game says, oh, He's not allowed to have poison, so he clearly isn't poisoned, so he can't, like, so, so we, we can't remove poison, he can't even get poisoned. So the game had, like, checks in place or something like that for what statuses were currently valid. Uh, but yeah, exactly. So if we could detect which statuses were valid and tie into the same way they do it, we could do it that way as well. Um, but... Right now, we're just going to do it based on items. Uh, I don't have a ribbon attached, so... Accessory Cloud, what is it, 18? Yeah. Alright, so now Cloud has a ribbon, ribbon equipped. Um, so Cloud should not be allowed to get the same statuses that the other ones get. So let's have a look and see what happens. Which I just realized means I can't game over the party very easily right now because Cloud can't get these status effects uh, if if we're doing this right. Um, can't petrify top. See? Can I put him asleep? Can't can't put the top to sleep. Can't petrify him. Uh, can't apply confusion, but I can regen him. So that means it is correctly identifying which statuses Cloud is allowed to have. So it wasn't just blocking all of them. It was only blocking the ones that Ribbon is stopping. 
So, uh, I don't know if Suna's still here. I know you were asking about it before, Mr. Shoji, but uh, he will probably be thrilled by that, uh, because that does mean that uh, those items now work. So, you can use ribbon. Ribbon bug solved. That bug has been in this code for a long time. Um, speaking of which, for anyone that didn't see it, uh, so we, we alluded to it before, but uh, we when we say that the menu color can change at any point during the game, we are not kidding. That can be mid-combat, that can be while you're actually in the menu. Whatever, doesn't matter. You can just change it willy-nilly, however you like. So it's it's quite quite a nice trick. Okay. I need to remove Cloud's uh, ribbon, because usually in order to get a, a reset of the game, I, I game over by just petrifying everyone, but <laughs> Cloud's ribbon currently has him protected from that status, so yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Janiski, we could rainbow the menu if you want. Uh, we do have a command that, that does do a rainbow, and it just causes the menu to just constantly be changing. Uh, it's quite fun. All right. Um, so this is a massive change uh, that we'll call uh, more. This is more saying an i7 merging uh, is what I said in my commit. I'm pushing out those changes. Um, yeah, exactly, Mr. Shoji, um, which is why I'm hoping we're going to be able to read that data from elsewhere or figure out from New Threat uh, which protections, like if we could read their data too, that would be nice, um, or we might be able to find it in memory either way, um, but I, I would rather it work uh, on the default stuff uh, more than anything else. Working with default stuff is is obviously the, the most important <laughs> okay, um, I was going to do a thing. So the other thing I wanted to talk about on this stream uh, is I wanted to have us take a look at the um, Elena can do that for any mods that don't use 7th Heaven to load them along with the default. Oh, is it something about how 7th Heaven uh, applies the mod that causes the issue with that? Do do the other ones actually like modify the kernel and, and 7th Heaven uh, like does it in memory or something like that, uh, Mr. Shoji? <coughs> Excuse me. Hang on one second, everyone. Hey, sorry about that. I'm back. Oh, uh, I didn't have that running. Uh, hang on. Since I didn't have this running when I reloaded that screen, uh, that page didn't load. So I will fix that one second. There we go. Ah, yeah. See, so Seventh Heaven is modifying the memory of the game of the game itself. So, although to be honest, if we could pull all of our data from from memory instead of from the files, um, the then in I mean in theory that would work even better uh, because then then we would work with everything. I wouldn't even care what it is, but that could also, but that is also much harder because, uh, yeah, if we can get to that point, then that would be super nice. I mean, that's a lot of what we're doing here with these is trying to pull as much memory as we can out of that. But, um, 
Exactly, yes. I mean, that's the same thing with that I've been dealing with with i7 the whole time, is tracking down the information for everything. That's why I was hoping that, uh, like, through using the information that we can gain from Elena, uh, we should be able to find more stuff in memory, is my hope because I really do want to find the in-memory image files to be able to modify them. So the image files as well as the uh, font files, if we can find those in memory and modify them, that is the holy grail of what I, what I would like to do. So, because there are a handful of like really, really cool features that I'd like to build that I alluded to a long time ago when we were talking. Uh, okay, so the thing I wanted to do is I wanted to set up a GitHub build because I have not actually set one of these on the new actions on GitHub. So I have not tried setting up workflow like this. Uh, so how do we do it? Name, .NET Core. Uh, .NET Core... Uh, uh, On a core. Uh, that might be what I want there. using uh oh yeah yeah no i i agree um uh mr shoji that that was the challenge i was running into is it is a pain in the rear trying to find it with uh cheat engine but um uh, i was hoping that uh we could leverage some of the information we can pull from elena and read memory as well and hopefully find it that way And I don't have the answer on that one either. Um, but yes, I suspect that they are using some kind of compression in memory uh, because I had a lot of trouble finding where the actual uh, data was, trying to do very simple approaches for finding it. So. Uh, okay, so... Not in a core CLI. Uh, build runs out of steps, action. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work, because um, it shouldn't work on Ubuntu. So, what is this? Uh, on uh, push, uh, which I guess, I guess I'm okay with any. How do I change the OS? Yeah, I want to say Windows latest. This needs to be Windows. So build runs on Windows. And then the, the steps I want to take. Uses actions checkout uses setup.net v1 uh, with not a core version that and then does a run.net build that configuration release mode. 
Uh, so we won't have any steps yet. We won't we won't do any uh, like tests yet, but this could at least build it. Right? Um, let's say uh, automated build. Yeah, creating that file, that's fine. For the name of the commit. Uh, the pull request, uh, yeah, we can we can do that for now. But I want to actually take a look at what happens with this. Does this automatically have a build going? Oh, there it is. Okay, so it's starting up the build. That's kind of neat. Um, uh, set up the .NET Core version. Did you? Oh, you said that a few minutes ago. I think I, I think I adjusted that since you said that. Uh, using the Win API though. Um, oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I wasn't looking at that. I wasn't looking at that screen, so I didn't actually see chat at all while I was doing that. I probably should have looked at chat. I figured it out, which was reading the documentation, figuring out what it's supposed to do. Um, yeah, I have not. As I said, I have not tried the. Um, I did not try um, uh, the actions in GitHub yet. I've, so this was the this, by the way, is the thing I was excited about when Microsoft was acquiring GitHub. I wanted to see what they would do with um, basically adding in their Azure DevOps stuff into GitHub. Uh, and then my hope also was that like that Microsoft would stop trying to be like stop their existing efforts to have like source control there like their visualstudio.com stuff that they were doing for a while, I was hoping that they would just be like, no, no, that's all going to be on GitHub, and by the way, we're going to integrate all of our build stuff with uh, the um, with GitHub. Ooh, I got a failure. Uh, wrong version. Error process completed with exit code 1. What useful info you have there. Uh, does not contain a project or solution file. Oh, uh, yeah, no, it's right. I'm wrong. It's right. Uh, it it is correct. I am I am not correct. It is correct. Uh, um, what's it in source? Yeah. So should we not build, um, which I guess I could do not slash source. Probably the the like right way of doing that. Uh, so um, specify a directory. Let me try committing this. See what it does. Once this is merged in, I will uh, put our other code. I will put our other uh, branch onto this one. Uh, that way, when it gets its pull request, it'll have this as well. Um, yeah, I think the backslash is what I want to have on that, but maybe it's going to accept a forward slash. I don't know. Um, being Windows, it should be backslash for directories, but um, I don't know the exact circumstances for everything on there. So we'll see what happens. Either way. Um, Oh yeah, no, no, I'm I'm aware, Mr. Shoji, of the fact that they do uh, like separate hues for each one. So when we change the font, we're gonna need to change like, you know, I forget how many different files. Uh, I'm I'm aware of that one because uh, the idea came from Suna. 
Uh, so, Mr. Shoji, I will actually just tell you what the idea was that I'm hoping that you can help me figure out. So, these characters have names in here. And if I go, uh, you know, Cloud Shoji 100, Cloud becomes Shoji, right? But I might want someone else to be able to come in here and be able to say, um, uh, that Cloud's name is, uh, wait, what? Uh, d yeah, de dev to think, right? Now, this doesn't fit, but I don't want it to actually fit. What I want to have happen is I want to show an emote here. So I want to modify the files and be like, oh, no, we're going to put that emote in there. So we're going to put a little version of that in the font file and display it right there. Now, I know for all the rainbow text and other stuff that they're going to do, the font files have you know various different versions depending on where the name is being displayed. Uh, because if a character's hurt, obviously they need to have the cut. They have it uh, hued in a different color, and they use separate files instead of like at runtime altering the hue of the of the of the font, which is fine. But the idea is that I want to be able to change it so that we actually show like emotes in in the names when the people rename. Uh, uh, Oxassful, uh, um, which I'm guessing uh, I probably just totally butchered that name. Uh, welcome, hi, greetings. Uh, I am not a Microsoft employee, no. Uh, I use Microsoft technology for some of the stuff that I do. Um, I have uh, spent a lot of time at Microsoft. I've done a lot of uh, like insider stuff there. Uh, I spent a bunch of years as a Microsoft MVP a long time ago. Um, the uh, And uh, I, I know a lot of people that work at Microsoft, but no, I am not a Microsoft employee and uh, I'm I don't currently have any plans to become one, um, so it's not different files. It's a single file with multiple color sets. Oh, so that's—I mean—that's just how they're storing it. But yeah, something like that. That makes sense, Mr. Shoji. What if you change the face? Uh, so we—you uh, mean these images here? Uh, we could potentially change those as well in some way. But I want to avoid that only because mods will often change those, so I don't want to. I don't want to mess with that too much. Um, with the font stuff, if a mod changed the font, that's not necessarily an issue for us because we can just overwrite specific sections of it. So where they were using it, we might cause some problems, but um, we shouldn't like it, it. Like it wouldn't just be an obvious break. So. Okay, so we got some warnings, but it looks like it did actually run, uh, and that's that's fine. So hooray! That means that this pull request uh, is actually going to work. So the check is passed. Um, I am not going to wait for Shoji to review this. I am actually just going to merge it. So squash and merge. Uh, yes, I agree, s &B. Hype. The the add a uh, GitHub build is not one of those things that I'm like, yeah, I need someone to review that before, before I do that. But, let's go ahead and uh, do evil, evil, terrible, awful things, because that's fun. Uh, yeah, Janisku, exactly. Uh, you, could, you could call him... Uh, Still same error message. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't have zero gill. You have zero gill. Yeah, it's it's a good response. I know. What characters did you intend to use for the emotes? I'm not sure how many are free and don't. Wait, what? What characters did you intend to use for the emotes? Oh, that's good, Mr. Shoji. Um, yeah, uh, so I've looked through the character set, and there are a handful of characters that I think we could get away with removing. Realistically, we don't need to remove all that many. Yeah, so there are a handful of characters that are not frequently used in the game that I think we can get away with, uh, 
just stealing in that font file. I've taken a look at the files and I think we do have uh, like a dozen or so that we could use. So we could limit people to like only one is allowed to be in any given character's name, for example. Like you can't use multiples, but like you could use multiple of the same one and that's about it. So stuff like that. Uh, I want to go to um, where? Where is these? Where? Where is that file? Um, it's in the GitHub folder. So uh, um, I'm gonna stop the program for a second. I'll start it again. Uh, welcome, uh, Eva. Thank you for that, uh, or Ava. Uh, thank you very much for that, uh, follow. Much appreciated. Greetings! <laughs> uh, does FF7 use the GPU or, uh, CPU rendered? Uh, funny thing, Fuel Stable, I have no idea. Um, I would not be surprised if they are using the CPU instead of the GPU, but I do not actually know. Oh, nice, Mr. Shoji. I was hoping so, because, uh, I would really like to do some of that stuff. Um, work with Microsoft. Uh, sometimes, uh, Ava, I have done a reasonable amount of contract work with Microsoft. I'm not an employee there. I'm not planning on being an employee there. Um, th that being said, I'm, I'm not saying I wouldn't be an employee there, uh, but it's just not uh, something that I'm, I'm planning. It's uh, I, I like being independent. Um, there are some nice things about it. Um, Regarding connection to Microsoft, I've uh, in the past been a Microsoft MVP. Uh, I've been in a number of their insider groups. Uh, I think the only insider group of theirs that I'm currently active in is the uh, ASP Insiders. Uh, but I do a lot of stuff with Microsoft. Uh, it's a good group of people. Um, they they build some nice stuff. Uh, there we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do horrible things now, uh, because that's what's fun to do on the stream. Uh, you miss MSN, yeah. Uh, I used to use MSN back in the day. I used to use uh, it was Messenger as well, AIM as you might call it. Uh, I was a big uh, Trillion user. Uh, I used Pigeon a lot. Uh, pid, pid, pidgin, pid, pidgin, yeah, that one. Uh, interesting thing you can actually see, uh, there's, a, there's another streamer that... Uh, uh, I did use ICQ at one point. There's another streamer that... Um, I, I do not remember my ICQ number. <laughs> uh, there's actually a streamer that does the uh, the open source development of the current version of uh, Pigeon, which is kind of kind of funny. So if you actually want to see some of that old stuff, you can you can actually uh, it it still exists. Um, a King Arthur fan made game. Uh, you absolutely could, Ava. It could be really funny. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep, uh, I, uh, did you know there's a cool site API for removing backgrounds from images? Uh, that makes a lot of sense, uh, Janisco. I think a lot of people probably do that. Okay, um, so we just pushed this up. I want to create a pull request from this. So we merged in that one. Uh, but I want to create a pull request from this. So this is, um, fix bugs, uh, uh, this is uh, fixing equipment, uh, fixing command bugs, we'll say, and I'll list them here. Um, we'll say uh, equipment, materia, removal, bugs. Um, this is the uh, ribbon bug, and I think, uh, the, well, yeah, those are the main ones. Create that pull request, and we should see a a build from this. Uh, is it running right? Uh, SMB, it's not running right now. Uh, so what's going on? Uh, wasn't Pigeon an IRC based? Uh, Uh, so Pigeon's developed for Linux, but they, they've always built Windows versions as well. Um, uh, 
you are from Iceland. Uh, greetings, uh, person in Iceland. I am from uh, the uh, states of uh, the United in America. And uh, <laughs> uh, obviously a, uh, an American of European descent, uh, as many people would probably guess. All right, you should be able to... No, 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 I am nowhere near Cali. Uh, I am in the Eastern time zone in the United States, so the most populated time zone with, uh, in, the, in the States, I should say, with like, uh, you know, 40-some percent of the U.S. actually lives in Eastern time zone, which uh, surprises people. Because, uh, no, no, no. Uh, you can keep guessing for a while. Uh, I can give you a hint. I am in one of the, uh, I am in, uh, what, am I in the seventh most populated state? Yeah, I think I'm in the seventh most populated state, which, uh, you know, makes me, like, you know, in the state that's, uh, <laughs> I don't think I have the schedule command running, uh, right uh, anymore, Janiscu. Uh, no, no, Washington's tiny. Washington's tiny. That's a small state. Oh, no, uh, no, you just, you just have to spell it right, apparently. There we go, rainbow mode's turned on. Congratulations. Uh, Boston is a city. Uh, it is in the state of Massachusetts. Again, a small state, actually. Um, the states that are large are California, Texas, uh, New York, Florida, Illinois, Pennsylvania. What did I do? Te uh, so California, Texas, uh, New York, uh, Florida, Illinois, Pennsylvania, and I am in the seventh one, Ohio. Uh, after Ohio, you get to other states like Michigan, for example. So, of, of the 50, I am in the uh, seventh most populous. Yep, yep, that one. So, one of the Great Lakes ones. So, uh, I, I am on the northern border with Canada. So, I can uh, just kind of swim across and, and get into Canada. Yep, it's good stuff. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so um, if, if anyone's seen any uh, American football news recently, uh, I live in the region where uh, a football player was uh, nice enough to take off another player's helmet and hit him with it in the head. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so, uh, that was, that's been in the news, uh, like crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice thing. You're like, oh, great. Uh, well, well done. Way to, way to represent the city. Uh, what was I going to do? Uh, you want to get this game because you want to mod it. That is awesome. I, I approve. It is a, it is a good game. It is worth modding. Uh, and the game is kind of, is the, so the game is over 20 years old. Uh, so you can actually pick up a copy of it on Steam for not terribly much. It's really expensive considering how old it is, but yeah. Um, if you are interested in modding it, there actually are uh, fairly significant modding communities. Um, you'll notice the guy Sunamods that just chimed in there. He is a Final Fantasy VII modder, uh, so um, he, he knows a lot about that stuff. Uh, what we do here is mostly not modding the game, but uh, manipulating the game uh, as a program. So we take more of a programmer's approach to uh, messing with the game. I, I know, right? Yeah, Mr. Shoji, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Sunamods, yep, 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 you'll find him in here. Uh, Sunamods is an awesome guy. Uh, we, we like Sunamods around here. Uh, Sunamods will actually be running our program again soon. Uh, so, this, this program that does this stuff. Uh... Huh. So... Does Square Enix know it? Uh, I have a feeling that Square Enix has no idea that my program exists, but it is possible. Um, the only reason it is possible is if they watched the most recent playthrough of this by um, um, Maximilian, uh, you know, like Maximilian dude, which you might know. Um, when he was uh, streaming this game, uh, 
He commented how ridiculous it was that someone had made a program that let chat control menu color. So he mentioned it in a, that's crazy and that would be really terrible uh, to do on a stream like his. Because uh, he was figuring chat would just do it all the time. But yeah, he actually mentions it in, uh, uh, in before he started his most recent playthrough. Which I thought was kind of funny. I was like, oh hey, I got mentioned by like a, uh, a well-known streamer. Uh, in that he apparently had noticed that it exists. I had noticed that it existed, so that's just kind of funny. You know, uh, Ava, you could do this one if you really want purple. And then, then it does stuff like that, which is really kind of cool. You could do gray instead if you if it makes it too dark this way. Something like this. See? And then that's, uh, that's a much nicer way to do it. See? And then you get all these cool effects. You can also do, like, uh, gradients. Uh, yeah, there is a, uh, there's a Discord for our stuff, uh, which... Uh, relevant links to all the stuff. <clears throat> And yes, uh, wheat lol, it's actually just rainbow for, for that one. Just do rainbow instead of uh, menu rainbow because uh, it's an entirely separate thing. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot I didn't set that one to free before we started the stream, so I'll trigger it for you, wheat lol. Um, yeah, so if anybody is interested and wants to learn more about this or get involved in the project or anything like that, we do actually have a Discord, uh, and there's a channel in our Discord that is dedicated to uh, discussions about Interactive 7, which is this program we build here. Um, on our stream, not everything we do is Final Fantasy 7 related. We do program other stuff as well, because we're just programmers. We like to work on a lot of interesting stuff. Um... Oh, yeah. But Rainbow Mode, it's good stuff. Um... The, um, uh, that doesn't give you a blue screen of death. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, Ava. Uh, I don't know which thing would give you a blue screen of death, but, um, either way, a uh, handful of links. If you are interested, uh, in, in checking out that stuff, feel free to join our Discord. Uh, that is a great way to chat with us. Uh, we do have one, so click at the link in the chat or down below. Um, a, oh, a VM, um, Oh, yeah, I always get distracted by chat, wheat lol. Uh, read previ Ava's previous comment? Are there any uh, VMs for Windows? Uh, a VM you don't get... Uh... Oh, Ava, are you not running on... Or do you not run Windows? So uh, if you do want to run Final Fantasy VII, um, you will want to run... Uh, you, you, I mean, you will want to run that on in Windows because that's where it's designed to run. I don't know if they have a non-Windows version, but um, our our program only runs in Windows. Uh, use Windows 10. Uh, oh, then then we're good. What do you need a v, What do you need a virtual machine for? If you can just run it, we're not running in Docker or anything. We're not doing anything anything strange like that. It's just a standard like Windows WPF program. Uh, you might need to install .NET Core in, in order to do it. Um, yeah, that uh, that makes sense. They wanted to get everybody upgraded to uh, Windows 10. <laughs> well, either way. Uh, yeah, um... Ava, uh, if you have Steam already on your computer, um, it is it is available on Steam, so you can get it here. I forget what it costs. Uh, it's not expensive though. Yeah, so at least U.S. dollars, it's uh, twelve dollars right now, uh, but. The Steam sale will be coming around, uh, and then it will be much cheaper. So, I agree, Fuel Snabel. I wish they would make a cross-platform version of WPF. That would be really nice. Um, 
Ah, very broke, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, I, I will say that the game gets much cheaper around the Steam sale, as uh, it goes on sale every time. Uh, so it becomes much more possible to do that then. Uh, either way, um, I want to wrap up the stream. We've been going for about two hours, and um, it is time for me to get going because I've got, uh, you know, family to go hang out with because uh, obviously it's a Saturday. Uh, again, as I mentioned to people, I am hoping that I can get some midweek streams in, but my schedule has been jam-packed. I'm actually trying to catch up on some work, uh, so we'll see if I can get some streams in. If I can, uh, I will be sending out notifications, so if you haven't, uh, make sure you click the follow button as uh, getting notifications about streams is the best way to know when they're going to happen, because, uh, I mean, but that is like in in the moment you find out that it's going to happen. If you want to find out in advance when streams are going to happen, uh, the best way to do that is to join our Discord uh, because our Discord is the place where you are going to uh, m most be able to chat with me about stuff, and I mention to people when I'm planning on streaming over there, uh, so that's the best spot for that. If you missed any of our past episodes, you can find them in the video section here on Twitch, uh, as well as our full archives are actually over on YouTube at youtube.com slash c slash devchatter. You can find the link in the chat or down below the stream uh we've got hundreds of episodes uh we're on, like what is this episode 224 of dev chatter uh so we have been a stream for a long time we've done a lot of episodes we've done lots of cool stuff the youtube's actually broken out into playlists so you can actually find stuff based on topic uh that is quite fun including some episodes for beginners so if you are one of the newer programmers there uh, and you are just getting into stuff that is a great way to uh, you know, just learn about basic programming stuff. So if all this was like, whoa, I don't understand programming at all, but you thought the Final Fantasy VII stuff was interesting, we do have uh, some episodes where we were uh, teaching people how to program from scratch. So, uh, let's see. Uh, you're getting a PS4 in the new Pokemon game. I am interested in the new Pokemon game, but I have not played it yet. Uh, Electron is the new cross-platform desktop GUI. Uh, yes, Electron is getting used by a lot of stuff. Um... Uh, sounds good. Um, oh, oh, so, uh, Suna, that's not how we met. We met in, um, we met in someone's stream. Uh, you were, that was back when you were locked out of this, uh, username. You were watching someone, uh, play Final Fantasy VII. Oh, were you in, um, um, you might have been in Bubs, I thought you were in Bubs' chat before I was teaching him that, but maybe you're right, maybe you're right. I, I thought I met you before that point, I thought you were Sunamods again by the time, uh, I was teaching him. Uh, but either way, uh, yeah, Ava, if you want to learn to code, check out our playlist, there's some good stuff in there. Um, do I know MMD software? Not coming up with uh, what that acronym is right now, but uh, I might know that, but just not thinking of it. Um, isn't React for Boomer? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Um, oh, it's uh, 3D modeling software. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I don't do, uh, I don't do modeling stuff. Um, the most we get into the actual graphics programming stuff here is... Um, we did some uh, stuff with pixel art and uh, 2D game development uh, in the past uh, on this stream, but that was a long time ago. Um, I know a lot of people that do modeling stuff, so uh, that's never been something that uh, that I've had to dig into. Uh, the programming is where I, uh, you know, put most of my efforts, and we do some interesting stuff with it. So, creators uh, all work in different specialties, so pick one, do some good stuff in it. So... Either way, I want to thank everybody for hanging out today. I had a really good stream. I enjoyed having you all here and hanging out the whole time. Um, I want to wish you all a great rest of your weekend, and I am looking forward to uh, hopefully getting a stream in sometime during the week. But if not, uh, then um, my next stream will not be on the Saturday. If I so it will so it will not be next Saturday. I will probably delay that one and do a Sunday stream on the 24th of November. So uh, I look forward to seeing you all on the 24th of November uh, for our next stream. Uh, so hopefully uh, you can all make that. 
I would like to do a stream during the week, but I don't want to promise anything because good chance that uh, I won't have time. But hopefully we'll get one in because I do want to get our stream schedule having more episodes than we are. Icy Black Deep, hey, welcome. Uh, <laughs> we are just wrapping up here now. You want to make a Final Fantasy VII Pokemon Go clone? Uh, Ava, that would be awesome, but I have a feeling you'll run into some licensing issues with that. Um, but I don't know the events from the top off my head. Anyway. Either way. Uh, oh, yes. View. Yes, I use View. Exactly. Wheatlaw, uh, Fuel Snable. View is the one I like. It's good stuff. Uh, either way, have a great one, everyone. I will see you next time.